everyone welcome back we are trying this again i am hoping i'm gonna fix all the audio problems this time uh i've heard that it was too quiet but i'm gonna try and fix it to the best of my abilities so if it's still not okay just comment down below and i'll see it and i'll try and fix it still new to this still learning but today we have a q and a um and it's a bit more of a assumptions q a from Amberlynn and so i wanted to um watch it and um maybe like you know set the record straight from like the viewer's point of view because i think a lot of the time she's kind of biased and i think we all are kind of biased when we're trying to be on the defensive so let's just get right into this i want to offer you my perspective my views and kind of how i feel about the things that she's talking about um about certain rumors and assumptions and things like that so let's just get right into this Hey guys! At least it was worth a try. So welcome to a new video. So my shirt says, I'm so bored, Betsy Johnson, but I promise I'm not. So in this video, I have 77 rumors. Is that because 77 is such a lovely number? Is that why? Or assumptions. We're either going to confess to or clear up. But we have a lot of talking to do. I'm going to try to get through these as fast as possible. So if you guys are watching this and you're just automatically going to call me a liar, then move on. Everything that I'm saying in this video is 100% truth and you can believe what you want. And I don't mean that in like a mean way. It's just really hard for me to come on video, you know, talk and talk and talk about my life and confess things and talk about things and like people just assume that I'm not telling the truth. Okay, but what we need to do is think about why people are saying this. And this is because you have virtually no trust um, towards or from your audience. And that's because you have a track record of lying. You have literally made videos called Confessing Everything I Lied About. Not only that, very recently, there's inconsistencies in your story. We all know there's Octavia, for example, the last time you talked about it, you were like, it's brilliant, it's just not gonna work for me. And then very, very recently, recently you were like don't do it it's just terrible same thing with your feelings about destiny for years you were like nothing's going on you are all just making it up there's absolutely nothing and then recently you were like yeah actually i lied then now i'm telling you the truth so people are bound to not believe you because of what you were doing in the past i just feel like it's just kind of a given in your community that everything that you say has to be taken like with a grain of salt or assuming that 80% of it is true by your own admission because you've lied about the most like the tiniest things so very often um but even like bigger things like diagnosis and things like that like serious things you've lied about like diagnosing your BED by your own some by your own admission you've said that um you you know took something that shouldn't have been a diagnosis and you ran with it so essentially you are confessing to lying about things like that and so obviously people are going to not believe you and then just the track record of you know you said you denying assumptions or denying rumors that then came out to be true like you and destiny things like that so that's why people don't believe you and just saying you know this is 100 percent true doesn't make it true and just saying you know just get out if you're not going to believe me again you can't say that people are going to stay and if they think you're lying they're going to tell you you're lying that's just how life works you don't like the engagement ring becky got you 100 percent false i actually picked them out myself them the, okay girl i see you okay okay becky okay <laughs> the thing was hmm, skirt skirt let's rewind here two years ago on the willy-nilly i i sent her these two engagement rings that i absolutely love and i wasn't thinking anything of it the fact that she got me the exact ones that i asked for and that she saved that for that long is like goals i mean that's really cute like the fact that like becky wanted to you know like get her those particular ones and save up for it and whatever like that's nice i'm not gonna say anything um about that i don't particularly care for it but it's not for me to care for it's her engagement i'm happy for her and i hope she likes it i think what the problem was or what a lot of people kind of 
were, you know, confused about was that in the video where she's announcing that she's engaged, she shows virtually no emotion that we would expect someone that just got engaged to show. Like, uh, I understand that everyone reacts differently, but, um, you know, um, she always says that she's like an empath and very emotional, but she was just, you know, announcing this to her channel of like thousands of people and she was just virtually very bland um and personally for me as someone who was also incredibly emotional like i'm a cancer i'm a july baby like i cry at absolutely anything um i'd be sad absolutely bawling my eyes out like i i would so to me it was weird to see this ver very like very big difference in reaction like the one the, the one that she was talking about that apparently she was she was displaying that we weren't there for um and then her conveying that in the video where she was telling us you know oh my god like i'm so happy and she was just kind of like oh i'm engaged this situation is so incredible wow anyway this is what i'm using on my face and it was just weird so I think that's why a lot of people were, and she wasn't wearing the ring, so a lot of people were like, okay, what's going on? Do you not like the ring? Like, did you go and exchange it? Are you just a little bit annoyed? Like, whatever. Um, but that's normal. People are always going to to assume and people are always going to talk about stuff like that, especially with your kind of audience. So you knew this was going to happen, but I'm glad that you like it and I'm glad that Becky you know paid attention to you as a partner should and you know it was really nice of her to like save them the the pictures they sent there like the the rings like it was nice that that she saved them and you know and then she chose those ones I think that's really nice even if she didn't get the ones I picked out I would love whatever she picked out because it's like it's the meaning behind it and I feel like a lot of people keep focusing on the size of the rock, the price of the rock, how it looks, who bought it, and it's so stupid. It's the thought behind it. Absolutely, it is the thought behind it. Um, I think where people are getting that is because you yourself are an incredibly materialistic person on YouTube. Um, we have all seen you flash your money. We have all seen you talk about money. We have all seen you um argue about money. And you know, like when you were talking shit about Rafe and how you were buying them this and that and. Um, you are basically portraying them in a very negative light because in your mind they didn't have money You were literally talking about how little money they have and it's not the first time you constantly flash your cash You constantly so people are assuming that Because you come across as materialistic on this platform You would be incredibly materialistic when it came to your ring to something that you're gonna have to wear for the rest of your life potentially so in their minds they're like well you're not gonna like something that's cheap um, and we know that Becky doesn't mind cheap things like she said it before she was like I don't care so it was very yeah it was rumors and it was speculation because of your personality people were thinking is she not wearing it because she doesn't like it um because that's what you know you that's what your personality is like here on YouTube so that's why they were asking for it and that's why they were kind of saying you know but she doesn't like it um but I'm glad that you are coming out and saying you know it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter um like literally doesn't matter I'm glad that at least someone who comes across as materialistic like knows that it's not all about how big the diamond is right so like I'm still happy for you I just wish you like kind of put it across a little bit better um and the reason why people are speculating is just because of your personality on YouTube and what you show us essentially you stalk all of your exes on all social media platforms no I have no reason to stalk all my exes when I'm happy with my current fiance Woo! you don't plan on losing weight for your wedding I do plan on losing my weight for my wedding you know in your heart you'll never be under 400 pounds. I'm not saying that. I just think it's what you believe. Honestly, I guess in my gut, I feel like you're right. That I that I subconsciously feel like I will never be below 400 pounds. Which is such a horrible way to think. And I know putting negative energy out there is only gonna get negative energy and negative outcome. Yeah, Um. the thing is that... Uh, my like I really like the concept of self-fulfilling prophecies right so I've said this before and it's like if you have two of the same children right if you even probably if you have twins and they have the same academic capabilities but one of them will consistently and constantly throughout the whole life be told that they're just a bad student a bad child a misbehaved naughty child versus the other one will constantly be praised for how incredible they are even if they maybe fail because it's inevitable to fail in your life but even if they don't quite do something that they wanted to do, they'll say, it doesn't matter, it's amazing, it's amazing. One child will always be limited and one child will always do better. So if you, in your subconscious or conscious mind, because clearly you're aware of it, 
think there's no way I'm going to be under 400 pounds, then you are not going to be for under 400 pounds because unconsciously you're going to stop taking the active steps that you need to take in order to be under 400 pounds. So if you need to go to a therapist, a dietitian, a weight loss surgery, um, weight loss surgery, like center or surgeon, uh, a doctor, anything like that to be under 400 pounds and you're like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm never going to be, then you're never going to go and see those people and therefore you're never going to reach that goal. So I feel like it's influencing you from within uh, and maybe you're aware of it, but maybe you're not, but you need to break that kind of cycle you need to break the fact that like oh i'm never gonna do it so what's the point because yeah then you're never gonna do it so i definitely need to reverse my way of thinking you think you know better than professionals yes yes you absolutely do think i don't even think it's that deep as like i think i know better well actually yeah i do i just think that she thinks she's a medical mystery that no one has ever dealt with um, and she doesn't like being told opinions which don't align with her own. I think that's the fundamental root of like this attitude towards professionals. No, I just know that every said professional in different stages of their work says different things. A weight loss surgeon will say something different than a dietitian. A dietitian will say something different than a nutritionist. A nutritionist will say something different than a weight loss doctor. The list can go on so it is hard to focus in and listen to one of them when they all say something different yeah it's it's almost like they are all different professionals different individuals and the goal that you want to achieve has different paths of achieving it um let's start with the fact that you've just named four or three or four different professions none of which have mentioned an eating disorder specialist which is what you need these are just three of my many books on therapy and all of these are different therapies this is cognitive this is transactional and this is solution focused therapy these are all different therapies to help you but like a client can have one goal and all of these can help you help you achieve it now imagine if the client was like i'm just gonna not be in therapy because one person says i should be using this one one person says that i should be using this one and one person says so what? You can use any one of them. If anything, that just gives you more choice to achieve your overall end goal. Just because they all say different things doesn't mean that they are all wrong. You not wanting to take on anything because it's something different. Like, if anything, that just gives you more choice and more freedom, doesn't it? Because then you can pick and choose which one you want, knowing that probably most of them are right. First of all, you need to seek professional help from a person who actually knows about people like you, such as an eating disorder specialist, and then have a team of people work with you, such as a counsellor, psychiatrist, a weight loss doctor, and whatever else it might be. And second of all, you need to actually stick to their advice for long enough to see whether that's going to work and be in con like constant contact with them to report on whether that's working or not because that's the only thing that is able to then allow for that professional to individualize the advice that they're giving you. You just saying, I'm not doing it because they all have different approaches is not good enough. Just because that's true doesn't mean that the approaches don't work. You're excited about your engagement but scared of the future. 100% true. Don't make me cry. Thinking of my future is honestly really emotional for me lately. So let's just not even, let's not even dive into that. I can't help but think about the time when she said that she is very, um, the kind of person that's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. So she represses a lot of problems and doesn't take care of them because right now she's fine. So she doesn't think long term. Um, so I'm not sure what she means about like the future, but I keep thinking about her being scared because uh, she's saying she's scared, scared of like the negative things that could possibly happen. And then immediately after she goes on to say, let's just not even think about that. That's, if you went to therapy, that's a pattern of behavior that a therapist would help you spot. Because what you've just done there is exactly what you already identified as a negative pattern of behavior in your previous video. You said, it's not good that I've got this idea of like, let's just not talk about it for now, it's fine. I need to change that. And now you're doing exactly that. So if you went to therapy, if you went to someone who is um, specializing in behavior, um, probably CBT would be the best for you, honestly. I think it would be the most gentle on you out of all the other ones, but I feel like you would have coping mechanisms and mechanisms of behavior to right now, as you're saying this, spot it and be like, oh, 
oh, I'm doing that thing that we've identified is not a very productive thing. Let me think of how I can stop it. And let me think of how I can right now be like, oh, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm going to implement this coping strategy or this thing that me and my therapist came up with to make it better to stop doing that because you are essentially just engaging in that same behavioral pattern that you said is unproductive and not very good. So if you went to therapy, this is one of the points in your life where you could actively actively implement it in your life. This literally right now happening right in front of us is something that a therapist would help you with. Even though it doesn't seem like a big deal, it is a big deal because it underlines everything that you do. All these little tiny things, they have a knock-on effect on the bigger things. So this is something that should also be addressed, this kind of mindset that you have. You didn't understand what the protocol for Patreon really was when you started it. No, I completely understand what the protocol was, but deep down, I felt in my gut that I was making a bad choice, but I still wanted to do it because so many people request to see my poetry and read my writing. And I feel like it would be not as easy for the haters to find my writing if I had people pay for it. Well, that's completely redundant and just wrong because regardless of who was paying for it, someone would be paying for it. So if it would be, so if a paywall would make it harder for the haters to see your work, then it would also make it harder for the supporters to see it because you set the stake at so unbelievably high at $77. Um, however, if someone like who you classify as a hater really wanted your work, they would pay for it. They wouldn't care, they would pay for it and they'd leak it. There's no way around it. But also you keep saying like, oh, I don't want people to read it, but then you make them pay for it and then it's okay for them to read it. You also say things like, I don't want people to read it, but yet you've published multiple stories and multiple um, poems online for everyone six years ago or like five years ago and they're widely available. So I don't get it. And then you've made videos about your poetry and stuff like that. So like, I, I don't understand. So do you want them to read or do you not want them to read? Or do you only want the audience that you choose to read it, which is the people who are going to pay for it? Unfortunately, in order for someone to want a product, they need to be able to see um, how good that product is. In order for people to want to buy something, they need to want to buy something. Then no one's gonna give you 20 or $77 for something that they're gonna buy in the dark. Um, that's a lot of money, regardless of which tier it was. That was a lot of money. And based on your previous poetry, it is not worth $77. Not I've never seen a poetry book that is $77 for one poem a month or three poems a month. That is ridiculous. And that is some like world-class poems stuff. Like that's like, you'd have to be incredible. And you've literally misspelled and like had things not grammatically correct in your bio on Patreon. So why, why would you think people would spend that much money? It's not that good. Um, that's just ridiculous to me. And you guys, I'm on social media. This is my job. A lot of people have Patreon. A lot of people sell their poetry. So I kind of just like put two and two together and I was like, oh, this could be good for me. But then when I realized my gut was telling me no, that I should keep my writing kind of private. I just canceled it. You want to create content, but all the hate holds you back. Yes, there's a lot of content I want to create, but I just feel very like I'm stuck in this little box and I'm trying to, you know, dig my way out. It's just really hard because I feel like people expect me to be a certain Amber Lynn because this is how I started my channel, but yet everyone changes their channel eventually. I don't think it's us putting you in that box. I think it's you putting you in that box because you consistently show an inability to stick to one type of content that you say you want to do. So you've started off as a weight loss channel and then you said I don't want to be a weight loss channel anymore. Fine. But then after you said that you didn't just switch over to another type of content and stuck to it. You kept bringing up weight loss consistently after you said you're never going to bring it up again. You did that again with mental health. You said, I'm not talking about my mental health. YouTube doesn't like it. We're not going to do it. And then you said, well, it's a big part of my life. I have to talk about it. And you started it again. So you haven't gotten out of the box and just switched it. Like you've literally got your whole video about rebranding and you've done all the things that you said you weren't going to, you weren't going to do. So it's your inability to get out of the box and stay out of the box. It's not ours. We're just here to watch. 
you're actually still in love with destiny this is such <laughs> i got this probably more than any other assumption you guys i am not in love with destiny at all in any shape or form i don't know how many times that i literally have to say it i wish someone would hook me up to a lie detector test i can tell you that much because no shade no tea destiny knows how it is i do not and will not and would not ever be in a relationship with her again we don't jive well like that she i literally feel like she's like a cousin or something and i know she feels the same way and i know that's like really weird to say but like we've gotten to that point where it's very just like unconditional and like we feel like family so you guys saying stuff like that is so weird to me because we're beyond past this and again you have to look at why your audience is saying that and your audience is saying that because you've been saying this exact thing for years and like two months ago you were like yeah all those times that i've said that i was in love with her that was a lie i i was in love with her for like two years after we broke up and i was with becky at that same time when the rumors were going around saying you are in love with destiny whilst being with becky you were like no that's emotional cheating i'd never do that like i am not and now you're like, yeah, actually I was. You were in love with her for two years. So how do we know that you're still not in love with her? And based on the fact that you allow her to consistently disrespect Becky in front of you and not pull her up on that behavior and say things like, that's disrespectful, never say that again. How rude towards you, towards your, your fiance, my girlfriend, my fiance, that's incredibly rude. How dare you say that? You're allowing her to disrespect for, to disrespect your fiance for what? What is the reason why you're allowing her to be disrespectful? I would have to have serious feelings of love towards someone to let them disrespect my relationship. Like, I would not be okay with my parents disrespecting my relationship. Just on a human level. So I don't know what kind of feeling towards someone you have to have, to ha you have to have for them to be able to say, you wish I was your girlfriend in front of all of all of the fiancés, all of them, like I, it's beyond comprehension to me and I'm pretty sure it's beyond comprehension to a lot of people. That's why this is going around. Plus the fact that you've said that all the times you were saying you don't like her, you were lying. You enjoy the negative attention. No, not in the way that you guys probably think. So you do enjoy negative attention, just not in the way that we think. You, you contradicted yourself within five seconds. It's like, sometimes I appreciate it because it keeps the ball rolling. I'm just going to want you to remember this because no doubt there's going to be a time in the future where someone's going to be like, so you thrive of negative attention? And she's going to be like, no, no, I don't. Because she's done that in the past. Again, we've just talked about this. You say things for years and years and years and then in one video it slips out. And it contradicts everything that you've said in the past. So you've said, no, I don't thrive of negative attention. No, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um... I wish it was all positive and now you're like oh i know that it helps my channel so you do so you know that there's value monetary value and monetary gain in harvesting conspiracies controversies and things like that you know that it's useful to you you are aware of that and so you can admit that you can appreciate hate because it makes your channel grow and it makes your channel reach further people and audiences but you've said before that you just don't like it at all and you wish it would stop. Get your story straight. God damn, at least start writing these things down so you can remember. But I don't like the negative attention where people make up shit. Like, that's the part where I'm just like, okay, we need to slow down for a second. So you don't like when you're not in control of the narrative is what you're saying. You want to be able to get negative attention, but only on your terms. So by doing things like trolling, mukbangs, insulting and disrespecting people and only shedding light on negative comments and never appreciating the good ones. But that has to be done on your terms. And when people give you objective criticism and criticism in terms of things that you have done wrong or when people are speculating based on the things that have happened in the past in order to predict your future behavior you don't like that because you are not in control of the narrative that way i don't know what to tell you it just this is just not painting you in a very positive light because by making up stuff my literal reputation on youtube is created by a bunch of people who hate me and it's like 
for a while there I was like oh my god am I crazy like am I this am I these ways that people make me seem to be but then everyone in my real life is like Amberlynn no we know the real you calm down it's okay if it wasn't for the people in my real life I probably um would be going more crazy than I'm already going I have multiple problems with this statement okay one if it wasn't for the people in my life, I would be going crazy or more crazy now already going. Um, this needs to be addressed with a professional because as far like as appreciating people around you as a support system, that's great. But your people in the immediate environment should not be the only thing or the only people who are keeping you from losing your mind. Like that's very dangerous because people are here one day and then not there the next day. Your partner, so anything could happen. I understand that you think you're in love and you're gonna have this great life, but a lot of people think that and Unfortunately, the marriages or the relationship fail and for you to say and admit that this is the only thing that's keeping you stable is incredibly that's dangerous you need to be able to exist as an individual independent of the people around you and not want to be in this extremely dark place like you have to be able to develop again coping mechanisms and you know the ways of thinking that a therapist would help you with that show you that you are great on your own and everyone around you is great to have around you but you do not need them to not lose your mind that's so dangerous you need to address that number two this the fact that you said I was questioning my morals and personality and who I am as a person because thousands of people pointed out my mistake and then the people around me told me no you're fine and so I'm fine that is so fundamentally wrong let's use your argument in a different perspective I said something homophobic and thousands of people told me that that's wrong and I'm a homophobe because my views are inherently homophobic but my friends my five friends said no we know you it's fine and so it's fine well, what if your five friends think like you because because you surround yourself with people like you who also share those views that are not necessarily fine? All of you could be wrong. Crazy concept, but if you said something, for example, that is homophobic and all of your five friends said, no, it's fine, there's a very big probability or chance that all six of you are in the wrong. All six of you are homophobic. And this is just an example, but... Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if you do something wrong and thousands of people say that's wrong and you have five people saying it's fine, you shouldn't just be like, okay, then it's fine, I guess. You should maybe take a step back and look at it from a perspective of the people who say that was wrong. Educate yourself as to why it was wrong. Don't just repress it and say, well, my friends say it's fine, so it's fine. That's not, that is such flawed logic and it it's just so bad. I, I cannot, wow. Becky and you will both keep your names after the wedding. <laughs> no, um, we have talked a little bit about this. No matter what, we both will have the same last name. We just don't know who's going to take whose, if we're going to hyphenate, like create our own last name. We don't know that yet but we both will it'll end up being the same last name i actually think that this is a good thing like i think this is good and i think what um this is just like a speculation but i think the reasoning behind it or at least why i think she should do it is when she mentioned that she wants to enroll in college when she mentioned she wants to have a career outside of youtube when she said she wants to have a job outside of youtube a different last name would be perfect because if you type into google amber and reed right now not very favorable things come up but if you type into google amber williams or whatever becky's last name is um that's that's not going to bring up as much shit you know so if a potential you know employer or whatever else were looking you up which they probably do um i would suggest changing your name because you know it's one thing to be outspoken and have opinions and things like that but it's another thing where there's like accusations of you manipulating lying abusing accusing and things like that out there um that's not very safe but i support that i think you should because i think you should be able to separate your life from like youtube like outside life i don't think anyone should ever um be going out and trying to destroy your actual career prospects because of youtube because 
because if especially for people like you it's important to have a different career so that you don't have to you know monetize your addiction so I'm all for that I want you to have a different job and therefore I'm not going to go out of my way to ruin that chance for you so I think that's a very good idea is to change your name completely and possibly just move somewhere else and then you can you know start a new career that would be brilliant for you I'm all for that deleted your post about your patreon because of the backlash and the high pricing no i already talked about why i deleted it it was because in my gut i realized i don't want people reading my writing because i'm it's like when people read my writing i feel like i'm standing naked in front of them i'm super vulnerable you're literally seeing me in the nude when someone reads my writing and it just makes me uncomfortable and i realized i just didn't want to go down that lane you didn't want to go down that lane for free because you wanted people to pay for it and I guarantee that if a hundred people signed up to your patreon for 77 quid and you were getting 700 quid a month you wouldn't mind being vulnerable so you don't want to do it for free also we you have your published work online you don't keep it private it's literally out there like we read it every week because you refuse to because you were like oh yeah i'll show you like share with you my unpublished work and we're like yes please like it's a bit like crazy like yes fuck yes let's do it because you yourself say and like let me just let me just highlight that i do not think that the reason why people mock your poetry is because they don't like you i think whoever you were because of what you have said in the past relating to your poetry is why people mock you because you have said yourself that you are amazing at writing you are brilliant you do all these good things like you're like you literally say this is my passion this is what i do i have an amazing talent and then you can't even string a sentence together so the fact that you have the audacity and the confidence to label yourself as an incredible poet and then charge people 77 quid for them. That is why people are like, yo, they're not very good. They are not worth 77 quid. That's why people like me read your poetry. And now I also want to say that if you actually took steps to improve it, if you enrolled in college or if you even took like part-time classes to get better at it and then you came back and you were like, oh yeah, you know, like this is my new, like humble, this is my new poetry, like let me read it out to you. I'd be supportive of that. I'd be like, that's brilliant. That's really good. That's, that's crazy good. Well done. But you don't. You just assume that you have this talent that no one else has and then you produce work that you want to charge people for that is less than basic like some of it you cannot literally make sense of the sentence not only that there's fundamental problems in your writing such as sexualizing 14 year olds such as sexualizing women objectifying women and then at the same time shaming sex workers and denying them basic rights there's problems deeper than just people not liking your poetry so I want to get that out of the way. You've also said that you think your poetry, your old ones that we read, is really cringy and really bad. You've said that before. So I don't feel bad by, you know, laughing at it sometimes when it's so ridiculous. Because you say you laugh at it yourself too. So then that's fine. If you can laugh at yourself, then we can laugh at you too. But it's the fact, again, that you are trying to charge people $77 for something that's already been published, that's already been read on the channel somewhere else. Now, that's cheeky and disrespectful. I don't like that. And it makes me not like you, not only as a person, but as an artist. Because I wouldn't respect any artist that does something like that. That's ridiculous. Like, you cannot say all these things they say about yourself and then not deliver, but want people to pay for it. That's why people don't like your poetry. That's why people don't like you as an artist. Not just because of you, not just because of your work, but about, but because of all these underlying things underneath it. The themes, the sexualization, the objectification, um, the pricing, the, like all of that. That's, that's why there's so much more to it than you just being like, oh, I just don't wanna, you know, I'm just vulnerable. I just don't like sharing it. You do like sharing it for money. You put makeup on your knuckles to hide it. You know what? Let's put makeup on my knuckles. If you wanted to prove to people that you're not wearing makeup on your hands, wouldn't you like rub your hands with like a wet wipe or something, not put more on? Because that's like me now saying, and I'm not saying she does or she doesn't, I frankly couldn't care less. Um, but that's like me saying, I'm not wearing makeup right now. Let's put more makeup on my face. How does that prove anything? 
<laughs> what? So people were saying I put concealer on my knuckles. So let me get some concealer. I never in my life would have ever thought of doing something like that. Is this good for you? So, um, do I use a makeup brush for this? I don't even know. Oh my God, I'm getting it all over. Hold on. Okay. What? Ooh, crusty. That's cr Y'all, that's crusty. I thought you guys came up with a really good idea, but I realized it's not. Yes, I put makeup on my knuckles to hide it. <laughs> to hide what exactly? <laughs> Was that like a moment for you? Were you like cute just then? Did you think you were like quirky and funny? Um, I didn't laugh, I'm sorry. Um, first of all, uh, you did the thing that people were accusing you of to disprove the accusation. Didn't really make sense. Um, second of all, you just piled on makeup when in reality, you know, again, you are over exaggerating something that you're trying to disprove. Um, when in reality, all you could have done is just dotted some of it on and just like, you know, did that. And then, you know, you went on to like this to mock the people who say that you did it without actually disproving that you did it. And um, you're saying like, hide what exactly? Well, hide your unhealthy skin because the whole thing started when people were like hey we are really worried about her we think she might be pre-diabetic because of the really dark ring around her neck and also the really, really dark hands you said that yourself you literally you were recording one time you looked at your hands and you went oh my god what is this and you said i'm just so disgusted and you said i can't believe this I can't remember whether you said or not that this is due to your weight, but you were like, you were just as surprised. So people were like, okay, maybe there's something deeper. And as soon as people said, this might be a particular health condition, your hands were fine, but you didn't lose any weight. So people were like, well, what can make your hands look the same color as your skin without you drastically improving your health? Well, it could be makeup. So people said maybe because you don't like the rumours or you don't want people to speculate, you just started, and that's not that far off, like that's not a horrible, outrageous accusation. People just want to know. So if I was you, I would be like, no, look, here's a makeup wipe. I'm going to wipe my hands. Nothing there. Not only that, I've, you know, changed my eating habits and I've taken active steps to be healthy. And I think that's why, um, you know, my, my, my hands looked like that, but they don't look like that anymore. Thank you for being worried. You do not automatically have to disrespect and mock everyone who's worried about you. Won't stick to an upload schedule. Nope. You have already- I wasn't even- like, I was waiting for her to like, say something more. Um, so just no. But you wanted to have a schedule on Patreon where people are paying you almost a hundred quid. So you know, you are aware of the fact you don't want to stick or you can't stick to a schedule, but you don't feel like it's a bad choice to make people pay for a schedule. It's disrespectful towards the viewers who care about you. Highly unfair towards them. I disagree. I'm disrespectful to the people who are disrespectful to me. And if you feel like I'm being disrespectful towards you when you've done nothing but support me, that means I think that you are taking what I'm saying when you shouldn't be. So either way, it's your fault. It's not that I address things or I form things in a particular way that can be misconstrued. It's your fault. If you think I'm rude to you, it's because either you are rude to me or you're too stupid to understand what I'm saying, is essentially what you've just said. She literally can't reflect on that. She cannot say, I am sorry that I don't recognize you enough. I'm sorry that I don't do positive comment of the day. I only do comment of the day, which 99% of the time, because of the environment that I created, will be negative. I'm sorry that I say things that might be misconstrued. No, it's just, well, it's your fault because you're too stupid to understand what I'm saying. You have OCD, yes. And yes, I was diagnosed, calm down. Actually, the things I do because of my OCD 
kind of gets under Becky's skin. Okay, before she starts going on something else, um, this is the first time she has stated she has been diagnosed with OCD. In the past, she's only ever said she's been diagnosed with OCPD and then said that she picks her skin and she does things because she's got OCD. And so I multiple times said, I think you are confusing OCPD with OCD because one of them is a personality disorder and one of them is a compulsive behavior disorder. She has consistently been talking about her OCD behavior without telling her audience that she has been diagnosed because she wanted them to question it, because she wanted them to say, no, that's not right. You are confusing the two and things like that. She's done it on purpose. And I can't believe that yet again, this is another example of something that she's that she's essentially done on purpose. I cannot believe it. You fat shamed life by Jen. Oh boy. Oh, I am very, very interested in what she's going to say to this because we all know she literally said, not to be rude, but Jen is like 200 pounds heavier. And by your own definition, that's fat shaming. Not just by your own definition, but by the host of that live stream definition, Chantal Marie, one and truly foodie beauty. So let's have a look what you're going to say. Oh, so I was in Chantel's live stream and someone said that Life by Jen and Feudy Beauty are the same exact weight. All I said was, no, Jen actually weighs 200 pounds more and I'm not trying to be rude. That is all I said. So if you were just trying to say that, you should have said, actually, Jen and uh, Chantel are not the same weight. That's it. What you said was, no, she's 200 pounds heavier than her, not trying to be rude. So if that's by definition not fat shaming, anyone who says Amberlynn is and then enter weight, not trying to be rude, is not fat shaming. Because that's what you've just said, right? And now people think because I was just saying a fact about how, no, they're actually not the same weight. People think I was fat shaming life by Jen. Like, come on, get a grip. That's not fat shaming someone. That's like literally someone saying, you have the same breed of dog as Joe Mabob. And I'm like, no, Joe Mabob has a bulldog. I have a chihuahua. Does that mean I'm dog shaming? Like, I just don't, I, what? I just don't, I. Okay, well, that's not what happened. Um, You didn't say, cause you just said, just by me saying they are not the same weight. You didn't say they are not the same weight. You said Jen is 200 pounds heavier. That's two different statements. Not only that, you are now comparing it to something completely unrelated. You are saying, I have this dog and you have this dog. That's not the same as saying that someone is heavier than someone else. Um, and you didn't say that, you literally pointed out her weight. I want to just remind you that you yourself said that people are fat shaming you when they are simply pointing out you are big in your comment section. Like you, but you just said that just because they're pointing out a fact, that's not fat shaming. You need to keep your story consistent. If you are saying me pointing out Jen, Jen's weight is not fat shaming, it's just stay, stating the facts and it's not fat shaming and it's just stating the truth. Then someone on your channel saying, Amberlynn, you are big. Amberlynn, you are morbidly obese. Amberlynn, if you don't change your ways, you're going to die. That is still not fat shaming because that's just stating the truth by your own admission right now. By your own admission, however, these are all fat shaming statements, but yours isn't. By Foodie Beauty's standards, who hosted the live stream, she said, stop pointing out fat people's weight. Stop it, mind your business, don't talk about it. That's fat shaming, stop pointing it out. So by your own definition and Foodie Beauty's definition, you both just fat shamed Jen. And you are saying, get a grip. Can you imagine if one of us was calling you super morbidly obese and then when you said, hey, please don't point that out, that hurts my feelings, we said, get a grip? Because you don't know how that makes Jen feel. And you said, do not talk about someone's weight before because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know the underlying physical things. You've never walked a mile in my shoes. You don't know the psychological things. I've got a whole video about it. And yet you are here not taking into consideration how Jen feels about your comment. How does that make sense? You've said before that comments simply pointing out your weight hurt you so much and are so destructive and make you question your life. So if you knew that that is the extent of which one comment simply pointing out your weight 
that that's the extent of which it has such negative impact on you why would you then go to someone else's channel and talk shit about someone else and do that same thing to someone else when you know how badly it affects you and it's done to you why would you go and do that to someone else you are not making sense you know you're not making sense and imagine if someone left you comments like that and just said get a grip when you've just been crying about underlying psychological things and all these different things, that's all valid. But imagine if someone was like, get a grip. This is what you've just done. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. You need to practice what you preach. Your first ring was from Walmart. No, my ring was not from Walmart. Swear to the freaking holy universe. You are literally shaming people who do have their engagement ring from Walmart. Think about that for three seconds. Who cares? Okay, first of all, if anyone's shaming anyone, it's you because you just took a statement just stating the truth. Something that could literally just be like, hi, your ring is from here. And you took that and took offense to that and you said, swear to God it isn't. Swear it isn't. You're shaming people. They weren't saying anything. They didn't say that's disgusting that it's from this place. They just said, it's from that place. Just like someone being like, your Pandora ring is from Pandora. That's just a statement. You've just said literally the same thing in a different context and you said, get a grip. You're shaming people who have rings from Walmart. No, no one's shaming anyone. They just said, is it from there? I think it's from there. You took offense to that. That's on you. So you actually are showing us that you think less of rings from Walmart than anywhere else and then proceeded to say it doesn't matter. Clearly it matters to you if you felt the need to swear to God that your ring isn't from there. Girl, come on. Come on. Inconsistencies all over. Anyway, guys, that is everything that I have for you guys today. I'm going to quickly end this, go and edit it and pop it up to my Patreon first and then hopefully later on to my channel. If you would like all of my videos early, Patreon link is down below. Thank you so much for everyone who chooses to participate in it. Don't forget that on Saturday we have a live reading once again of Amberlynn's stories and poetry. The um, plot's getting thick, so you want to uh, wanna, wanna be there. You don't want to miss that. I love you guys so much. Um, subscribe down below. Don't forget to turn that little notification button on as well you have all of my social media as always i love you guys so much and i'll see you in my next one bye